Am I the a-hole for not helping my disabled sister with college? Plus update. Original post. I, female 24, have four siblings, Max, male 31, Lisa, female 20, Chris, male 20, Emily, female 18. Emily is disabled, and because of that, my parents dedicated themselves 100% to her, leaving the rest of us to fend for ourselves. When Max left for college, I became the main caregiver for my siblings plus all household chores were my responsibility. I want to make it clear that Emily's disability does not stop her from functioning like any other person, and she doesn't require any assistance or supervision nor 24-7 care. However, my parents have always spoiled her rotten, and she is very rude, mean, and entitled. My parents raised her with the mentality that her disability means she's allowed to do whatever, and everyone needs to bend backwards for her. My grandparents passed away three years ago, and I inherited everything which is approximately $6 million. They were very well off, I know, and the reasons I received all of it is because 1. When my grandparents were sick, Max contacted them after almost 10 years of silence because he wanted to know how much she will receive. I'm no contact with him, by the way. 2. They were very aware of how my mom treated me and my siblings, and she was disowned. 3. They were very religious and Lisa came out as bi at 14 while Chris came out as gay at 17. I went no contact with my parents after I moved for college. And when Lisa and Chris started college, I offered to cover all of their living slash educational expenses, as long as they do well in school. They gladly accepted. I also helped my best friend Lola, female 21, start her own business. I haven't spoken to my parents in six years. I haven't blocked them. They just never called slash texted. This year, Emily started college, and she burned out all of her college fund in less than four months because she's a spoiled brat and bags were more important than rent. Lol. In addition, she's doing horrible in school because she isn't even attending her classes, and she will most likely be expelled or held back. My mom called me two weeks ago, not to ask, but demand that I do for her the same I do for Lisa and Chris. I said no, because growing up, I was literally a slave for her and my parents. I'm helping Lisa and Chris because they are the only ones that treated me as family. I ended a call by telling her that for 18 years, Emily was their only kid, so now they have no right to demand anything from the kids they practically abandoned. Now I'm getting sh** for everyone, except Lisa and Chris, because 1. I'm causing unnecessary drama. 2. I'm causing a rift between Emily and her siblings. 3. Emily will be the only one without a degree. 4. It's not really my money and my grandparents would want me to help her. Then why didn't they leave anything for her? 5. Family is family and I should help my little sister. I don't buy to that crap. 6. It's not her fault that my parents were bad parents to me. Which is true, but she doesn't do anything to change her behavior. 7. She's disabled and it's not okay to discriminate. WTF. I feel like I'm doing the right thing but everyone is telling me I'm not. So am I the a-hole? Edit. I received a lot of messages with questions and a few ask in the comments about my sister's disability. So, I'm going to answer some questions. What disability does she have? I don't know. My parents never told me. And when anyone asked, they would get very defensive. Can't Emily get governmental assistance? No, because she doesn't have documentation that attests she's disabled. I remember my parents fighting about taking my sister to different doctors because they all refused to sign that she was disabled. Why doesn't the rest of my family pay for her? Because they are living paycheck to paycheck. Because they would spend thousands in buying Emily whatever she wanted. Why can't my parents continue paying? Because Emily's spending problem got worse since she left home, and the rest of the family is no longer in the position to give them money. Also, my dad got a work accident a few months ago and he was forced to retire so now their income has significantly reduced. How can someone spend that much? Simple. She renewed her closet, purchased a very expensive car, and just partied until she dropped. For reference, my parents had high-paying jobs, and Emily's college fund was around $587,000 when I left for college. Did me and my siblings have a college fund? Nope. We all worked our butts off to get scholarships so we can go. For your information, writing this, I'm starting to question if my sister is actually disabled, or if it was just what my parents wanted to believe. I mean, if no doctor would declare her disabled, is she really? My family thinks she's disabled because she didn't learn how to walk until she was five, and she didn't walk until she was seven. Maybe she was just a slow developer? Now for the top comments before reading the update. Not the a-hole. 
They don't contact you at all for six years until they want money for Emily? Screw that. You already paid for two of your siblings' educations, which means they didn't have to. So they should have plenty to put towards hers. You said you never blocked them. I'd say it's time to do so. They sound awful. This is it. Opie has already helped out the parents by paying for two out of three colleges. Not the a-hole. You were young and probably won't need it for a long, long time, but please make yourself a will so that your money will go where you want it if anything happens to you. Otherwise, it will go to your parents or all your siblings, depending on local law. Not the a-hole. Your grandparents knew who was the right person to get their money. Don't fold. You're 100% in the right. Her grandparents gave her all the money because two of her siblings were queer. True. The grandparents were a-holes for disowning just because they are queer. Opie, however, did the right thing accepting the money and helping her siblings. By doing so, she gave a big F you to the homophobic grandparents. Like, you didn't leave them anything, but they still got to enjoy the inheritance. So she blew up 500k buying crap. She can sell the crap she buy. Funny how they never considered that. Like, that's what I would do if I was broke. Or take a loan. And now for the update. So, funny thing. My favorite uncle called me a few hours after I made a post to tell me to block my family because they have come up with a plan to get me to pay. He didn't know what the plan was. He just heard a portion of the conversation between my mom and my aunt. And just like I said, my mom called later to tell me Emily is pregnant. So, I need to help her because if I don't, I'm damaging my niece slash nephew. I'm crying with how hard I started laughing. And I just told her to get lost, then blocked them all. But seriously, fake a pregnancy? LMAO. Opie's sister had over half a million for college and blew it all away in four months? Yeah, F that kid. And those parents blocking is the best bet. You underestimate the spending power of people. With more money, I'm almost sure the rates of consumption would have been higher. Yep. This is also why generational inheritance ends in a lot of cases on the third generation. Give or take one generation. Lifestyle creep quickly dwindles the money down to nothing. And with the insane sister blowing through half a million in four months, she would piss away all the money probably even faster than the first half a million. Who holds on to the delusion that their kid is disabled despite multiple doctors refusing to sign off on it? Because if they admitted she wasn't disabled, the blame for her behavior and failures would fall solely on them as parents. Munchausen by proxy? My first thought was that poor girl they did a movie about recently, who was told her entire life how sick and disabled she was, until she got away from her mother. And actually, she appeared to be totally fine, and it was all lies forced upon her. Last story. Am I the a-hole for asking my husband to pay for our son's college with his daughter's fund? I, 36 female, have been married to my husband, 57 male, for two wonderful years. I have a son from a previous relationship. Noah, 18 male, and he has a daughter from his previous marriage. Grace, 17 female. My husband considers Noah his son and is an all but name. Noah is an amazing student, high GPA, plays basketball and football, volunteers for charity, and is an all-around great person. Noah has recently received a likely letter from his dream school and we are all ecstatic about it. So, my husband and I started talking about finances and how we are going to contribute towards tuition fees. I was a single mom until I got married, so I haven't gotten much saved. But my husband has mentioned the fund has been collecting for college since his daughter was born. Now, here's the part that I'm asking if I'm the a-hole for. But please read the rest of this post before making judgments. I do explain myself. I asked my husband if we could use that money for Noah as it's enough for all four years of his degree. He said no in the beginning, but I explained that while I love Grace, she isn't very academically inclined. Average GPA, no extracurriculars, and has even said that she's going to the community college close by for the first two years. Plus, she is a junior, so we have a whole year to start building up another college fund for her. My husband is still on the fence, but at least he's not sticking with no. He wanted to talk to his daughter first and reiterate what I said above. It did not go well. He said there was screaming involved and included her calling my son to die names that I will not be repeating here. Accusing him of cheating on her mother, which is completely false and she knows it. We met three years ago, seven months after his divorce. I've been getting a barrage of texts and voicemails from his ex-wife's side of the family, calling me all sorts of names. 
My husband is disgusted with his daughter's words and actions and is pretty upset and down right now. I feel like I've caused this, but my mother, sister, and aunt are telling me that I did the right thing, that my son deserves that money. I heard about the sub and wanted to get an advised opinion. Am I the a-hole for asking my husband to pay for our son's tuition? I was asked by mods to say why I believe I may be the a-hole. It's because all of his daughters and ex-wives' family saying that I am. And I can see how upset my husband is. I can't help but think I may have caused it. Now for the comments before reading the updates and daughter's comments at the end. YTA, YTA, YTA. Whichever way you look at it, you're the a-hole. And anyone tells you different, aka your side of the family, is an a-hole too. That's Grace's fund, not your son's. Quit it with entitlement. And if your son is as academically and athletically gifted as you say he is, then he should be able to get some scholarships. Getting a part-time job is also an option, as is getting financial aid. Your lack of planning and saving is on you. Grace shouldn't have to pay for it. Being a single mother is no excuse. Also, your hubby spent close to two decades saving up for that fund. And your plan is to use it and then make up for it in a year? And not even just use it for a year while you save up for the next three years. Still an a-hole move but to lesser extent. But no, you want the whole lot. The entitlement is really strong with you. Your son is not entitled to Grace's money, whatever you think about her academic abilities. You denigrating them and her extracurriculars or lack thereof does not give you a pass to steal her college fund. And yes, steal because that's what you would be doing. And since they are super okay with you taking money that's not yours, instead of you stealing Grace's money, why don't you have your relatives, mother, sister, and aunt, contribute to St. Noah's college fund? Also, you're the a-hole for the our son but his daughter bit. You're the a-hole. The fund was made for Grace, and to Grace it will go, not to someone else. We have another year to build up the funds. You had your whole life and couldn't do it. Maybe you just married him to give your son a future? In my country, we have a name for women who do that. You're the a-hole. My son deserves that money. Wow. He doesn't deserve anything. You met and married a whole three years ago and you expect your husband to pay for your son's tuition? That's ballsy of you. OP. My husband loves his stepson so much. Not only has he come to see the kid as his in just three short years, he's prepared to screw over his own kid just to make him happy. Also, OP. Why does my husband's family think we must have been together before the divorce? Yep, I was literally rolling my eyes reading this post. Good lord. I think Opie thought she hit the jackpot by marrying this older man with a bunch of money and her son's college would be paid for and she'd be taken care of. Like, who cares about his daughter? She just gets in the way of Opie's plans for her and her son's future. And honestly, I'm going to say Opie's hubby is a bit of an a-hole too for being on the fence about whether to give his daughter's fun to Opie's kid. Shaking my head. You're the a-hole. Now for the update. I've accepted my judgment of being the a-hole and have read a lot of the comments. My husband and I have talked last night, and he decided Noah won't get the entire fund. The plan is, he will get enough for the first three years and the rest of the money will go to Grace. We will help Grace pay off any loans she may have to get as soon as we are able, and then start a new fund for our baby. Grace told us to screw ourselves when he told her, but we will still help her no matter what she does slash says. Like I said, I've accepted my judgment, but I would be fine with being called a lot worse if it means my son can go to his dream school. Why the hell are they willing to pay Grace's debts, instead of making Noah get into debt and offer the same help? Because you know they aren't actually going to follow through and leave Grace holding the bag. Yep, husband is an absolute idiot. Opie knows they will never, ever make a payment on a single loan. She even phrases it carefully. They'll help pay them off when they are able. So, when Grace says, Hey, I need you to hold up your end of the screw job agreement. Opie can say, Well, I did say when we're able, and we're just not able yet. Make payments for yourself, and then when we're able to pay, we'll pay you back directly. If she sees a cent, it'll be a paltry sum. Well, we did say we'd help pay them off, not pay them entirely. Also, that fund for the baby is going to be started before Grace sees a cent. You already got your education. The baby shouldn't have to take out loans. Do you want your sibling to struggle? Why do you hate your little sibling so much? Husband is going to watch that can get kicked down the road until he dies. And wonder why Grace doesn't visit anymore. 
we are going to help her. Yeah, maybe the husband is, but not the woman that didn't even save for her own son and doesn't see Grace as her kid. A woman 20 years younger than her boss bangs and then marries him and then asks him to pay for the entire college education while screwing over the bio kid? They are never paying for Grace's college or debt, and I doubt the guy is such a good student if he can't get a scholarship. So Grace has to now get a loan so this woman's son can go to school. Once she's financially stable, she will never see her dad again, and he will wonder why his daughter hates him. If I was her, I'd make sure that the majority of the loans are Parent PLUS loans, and then just ghost after graduation. Once she's 18, she should just pack her stuff and leave. The rest of the money won't be used on her. She better start looking for a part-time job to pay those loans. I was never academically inclined, went to community college, and now I'm working on my second master's degree, which will cost me $140,000 and significantly increase my earning potential. I'd be angry if my father had money set aside for college and gave it away to a new person in our lives because they thought I was dumb. I said it on that post and I will say it here again. Just because you do well in high school doesn't mean you will do well in college. Conversely, just because you don't do well in high school doesn't mean you won't do well in college. I mean, if you have a sh home life in high school and finally get the chance to get away from it, or finally get to study what you want at college, you might do well. And some star students in high school just weren't prepared for the rigors of college, or say, living outside a tiny bubble of their hometown. Now, for the daughter's comment when she found the OG post. You can't be freaking serious, Christina. When Victor asked me if this post was about me, I thought, no, she wouldn't be so crazy as to try and gain sympathy for this. But here you are. And the lies as well. Dad left us for you. That's why we call you a home wrecker. Because you are. Seven months after the divorce, my butt. He went through that divorce while you lived with him. My mom told me not to hold that against him. That just because he was a bad husband didn't mean he was a bad father. Guess who's earned that new title? You lied and tried to make yourself look better. And thousands of people still hate you. Congratulations!